Well, right now we are standing by to take your donations to send World War II veterans on an honor flight to Washington, D.C. Aren't they just incredible? I love this. I had the pleasure of meeting one of those American heroes who made the trip last year, and it's not every day that you meet someone who's lived life for 100 years. Ernie Micah of Louisville was drafted into the U.S. Army at 22 years old, but little did he know at the time, just a few months later, he would find himself a part of history. The year was 1918. Woodrow Wilson was president. World War I was coming to an end and right across the Hudson River in New Jersey. I was born at the right time. At 100 years old, Ernie Micah still has a thing for big bands. Yeah, this is basically all Burt Camford and Ray Conniff. Dean Martin snuck in there a little bit. It fills the home he's lived in here in Louisville since 1962. See, they go, they swing from one song to another, see? Music that reminds him of his late wife, Dorothy. We, we met at a, at a dance. Uh, come on out of there. This one is uh, lively. You can live a lot of life in 100 years, but 1941 was one year that changed Ernie Micah forever. That, that first year, under the draft, I was at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And, uh, and then uh, Pearl Harbor hit. And in days to come, the Japs, too, will remember Pearl Harbor. Like thousands of others, Ernie thought his draft service would end in just a few months. But after the attack on Pearl Harbor, he knew he was going to war. From Africa to Sicily to England, in, invaded uh, your uh, D-Day, and then all the way up to Berlin. As a member of the 9th Infantry Division of the U.S. Army, Ernie found himself on the front lines. We were part of the elite troops, you might say. D-Day came, Eisenhower figured I don't want these guys going in and get slaughtered right off the bat. He knew what we could do, so we went in two and three days after the initial day. So when we went in, it was just a, a shot fired here and there or a shell come in. It was nothing. The worst was over. The worst, 10,000 Allied forces killed on the first day. Micah's 9th Division advanced, capturing a naval base used by the Germans. See, I spent two winters on the ground, sleeping in the snow, in the mud, in the rain, foxholes. Two winters. It's amazing that I'm, I'm 100 years old, really. He was one of the lucky ones. By the summer of 1945, it was time to come home. This flight home with Eisenhower was a big thing. They broadcasted on radio throughout the city of Bridgeport. So everybody knew Ernie Micah's coming home. He married Dorothy, who had waited for his return, got a job with GE Appliances, and eventually moved to Louisville. The hell he lived through in World War II became a distant memory. It's only the last couple of years since this flight and all that I, I'm sort of excited about the whole darn thing again. You know? Honor Flight Bluegrass took Ernie to Washington, D.C. Thank you for your service, sir. Thank you, buddy. A time to remember the men who never got the chance to live the life he did after the war. And the men and women with him on that trip? That's one of the things about that trip. You got to meet some fellas which you would not have met. The only ones left in the world that know the same hell he lived.